With a line between human blunders and supernatural hijinks blur, our hero faces the ultimate challenge. Taru Moroboshi, just your average guy with a talent for attracting trouble, gets tangled in a high-stakes game where Earth's fate hangs by a thread. But it's not just about saving the world. It's about love, jealousy, and a series of misunderstandings that could turn a high school crush into an intergalactic marital mishap. Dive into the chaos, where destiny is unwritten, and every day is a wild ride in the cosmic roller coaster of life. Episode 1. Chaos descends as the skies team with Oni Dreadnoughts, their ominous presence foretelling an invasion. At the helm is none other than Loom's father, intent on bringing the world to its knees. Amid this looming threat, Ataru Moroboshi grapples with matters of the heart, confessing his feelings to Shinobu. The moment is fleeting. A passing beauty captures his eye, igniting Shinobu's fury and leaving Ataru in the dust of her scorn. Sulking on a bridge, Ataru catches the eye of Cherry, a wandering monk, who mistakenly concludes Ataru's contemplation is darker than it seems. A clumsy rescue attempt sends Ataru plunging into the water below. After drying off, Ataru and Cherry's paths cross again. This time, Shinobu and Ataru's mother join the fray, their concern palpable. But familial worry turns to national crisis as Ataru is swept away by government officials, ushering him into a living room standoff with Loom's father. Beans fly in a futile expulsion attempt as the jovial Oni outlines a bizarre ultimatum. Earth's destiny hinges on a game of tag. The rules are simple. Ataru must catch Lum, the vibrant Oni girl, and grasp her horns within a ten-day window. The catch? If he fails, Earth surrenders to alien rule, her heart tethered to the tumultuous seesaw of Ataru's attention. The game unfolds in a packed stadium, humanity's eyes fixed on Ataru's every move. But Lum proves elusive. Her ability to fly a curveball Ataru didn't anticipate. As the days wear on, his repeated failures cast a shadow over Earth's future, and Ataru's social standing, even chair can't help but brand him misfortune incarnate. With his reputation in tatters and his spirit on the brink, Taru's friends rally around him. Shinobu's promise of marriage if he wins stirs a newfound resolve within him, albeit skepticism lingers. Hope, it seems, is a fragile thing. The final day arrives, and Ataru's desperation peaks. He grasps at Lum, earning an electric shock for his trouble. But the spark of determination is unyielding. In a fateful twist, Ataru's frantic scramble leads to an embarrassing wardrobe malfunction for Lum, yet it provides the opening he needs. His victory is short-lived, as Lum's misinterpretation of Ataru's intentions leaves him betrothed to the alien girl, much to Shinobu's dismay. As Ataru revels in fleeting fame, Lum crashes into his everyday life with an explosion that cements her intent to stay. This new domestic reality is as volatile as the thunderstorm Lum conjures when Ataru dares to reconnect with Shinobu. Conflict escalates, the skies roar, and the city plunges into darkness as Ataru's pursuit of Shinobu leads to more calamity. Every step he takes spirals into chaos, from lightning strikes to crashing spaceships, until the turbulent tale culminates with Lum and Shinobu, each pulling Ataru in opposite directions. Before we continue, take a moment to answer the question of the day. What do you think is the most underrated fight in anime? Comment down below below for a chance to be shouted out in a future video, Episode 2. In the bustling morning of Tomobiki High, the day unfolds with a literature class where teacher Onsen shares a verse in English, hoping to stir the minds of the young scholars. However, the tranquility is short-lived. Lum's affectionate disruptions provoke Onsen's ire, resulting in an airborne piece of chalk targeting Ataru, who plays the innocent, wrongfully accused lover. This causes Shinobu's emotional dam to break. Her tears a signal that sets the girls and boys against Ataru. They can't fathom why Lum would choose him, and their agitation peaks when Lum plants a kiss on him. 
time, prompting Shinobu to bury Ataru under a mountain of desks. Later, Ataru, now bandaged from the day's tribulations, finds no peace at home as Lum's apology morphs into an electrifying cuddle, leaving him yearning for solitude that Lum simply cannot grant. The next twist of fate finds Ataru covertly slurping ramen at the Cat and Caboodle Diner. His attempt to escape notice crumbles when Lum, along with his parents and a tearful Shinobu, pleads for his return via the diner's television. Cherry, ever the mystic, makes a timely appearance, declaring knowledge of Ataru's whereabouts and brandishing his current look for all viewers. Panicked, Ataru collides with a stranger upon his hasty exit, a woman who laments her now strained heart and ominously foretells a worsening streak of luck should Ataru maintain his lecherous ways, her skills in physiognomy, painting a detailed picture of his ill-fated future. As the plot thickens in the quiet of a park, Sakura, a shrine maiden burdened by years and exhaustion, diagnoses Ataru's curse with women, a curse Ataru confirms with a twinge of self-pity, earning him another blunt encounter with trash. Compelled by her faintness and his situation, Sakura decides to perform an exorcism to rid Ataru of his ill luck. Sakura's temple becomes the stage for misfortune as Ataru, attempting to flee, stumbles upon the realization of her kinship with Cherry. Yet escape eludes him, caught in the firm grip of Sakura's mother. Inside the temple, Sakura's exorcism attempt is derailed by a debilitating toothache, summoning a surge of yokai that latch onto Ataru. Unperturbed by the swarming spirits, Sakura persists with her rights, her resilience only broken by a migraine, while her mother pleads for mercy. Sakura's fierce determination pays off when her health is restored, the yokai relinquished from her control and enveloped in her mother's embrace. Gratitude towards Ataru's unwitting role leads to a final exorcism, but the act inadvertently calls forth the Grim Reaper, who lands a slice on Ataru. In the sterile confines of a hospital room, Ataru awakens from his grim encounter to the concerned faces of his loved ones. His habitual flirtation with the nurse triggers both Lum's wrath and the Reaper's agitation, culminating in another shocking outcome. As night cloaks Tomobiki, a disconcerted Ataru meets Cherry, conspiring to strip Lum of her powers, unaware of Lum's prying ears. The plot thickens as she punishes his betrayal with her signature electric chase. Meanwhile, Satoshi, unwittingly serving as Cherry's courier, hands Ataru a small box containing a ribbon, a ribbon intended to bind Lum's powers when tied to her horns, its magic allowing only the binder to remove it. Lum, delighting in the gift, soon discovers her flight and electric powers are grounded, the ribbon's magic binding her abilities. The dilemma deepens as Lum, unable to summon and her powers, mistakes her plight for sickness, prompting confessions of love from both Akira and Satoshi, whose romantic rivalry is ignited. Shinobu's arrival and subsequent attempt to untie the fateful ribbon sees Ataru desperately intervene, igniting Shinobu's wrath and leaving Ataru bruised from her powerful kick. The drama escalates as Satoshi and Akira, driven by misguided chivalry, resolve to guard Lum, but Ataru's vexation leads to a fierce confrontation and their expulsion from his home, a move that earns Lum's praise and an uncomfortable proposal to share his bed. The tumultuous night escalates when the true nature of the ribbon is exposed, inciting Lum's fury and prompting Ataru's reluctant removal of the ribbon. Lum's unleashed shockwave is a testament to her anger, a vow of retribution echoing towards Cherry, who senses the impending storm and flees to Sakura's sanctuary. As dawn breaks, the enigmatic Mendo prepares for his own journey, his path from the skies to the school grounds, a parachute his bridge to the day ahead. Episode 3 Mendo makes a grand entrance, diving from the sky and into the unexpected chaos of his new school. His first impression is anything but typical. He's caught by a tree as Shinobu, in a fit of rage at Ataru, inadvertently throws a desk out the window that ensnares Mendo's parachute. From upside-down beginnings to his feet on the ground, Mendo's charm doesn't falter, especially in the face of an apologetic Shinobu, whose beauty leaves him momentarily enchanted. The classroom of Class 2, four buzzes with intrigue as Mendo introduces himself, drawing attention not only for his affluent background, but for his swift rebuke of Ataru's antics with Shinobu. This new student's presence stirs the dynamics as he comes to Shinobu's defense, while Lum interjects, declaring her ties to Ataru. Mendo's fascination with Lum deepens, although her allegiance to Ataru baffles him, leading to a sharp exchange of words. Under the shade of a tree, an election looms over the class. Mendo steps forward, aspiring to reshape the class with his strict disciplinary vision and exempting the girls from such measures, his charisma on full display. The boys 
however, rally behind Ataru, fearing Mendo's stringent rules. Ataru's comical mishap during his speech only solidifies their choice. The tie in the election leads to a traditional Mendo family duel, with Ataru unwittingly becoming the target of a cannon shooting contest. The duel spirals into a comedic chase, culminating on the rooftop with a glove-throwing ceremony that Lum disrupts, resulting in a shocking conclusion. Mendo's defeat is mistaken for a victory for Ataru, as the class misconstrues the outcome. Mendo's honorable but exaggerated response to his loss showcases his dramatic nature. In the aftermath, Mendo contemplates his feelings for Lum, a blend of admiration and uncertainty clouding his thoughts. An aerial mishap with Lum intensifies these feelings. Simultaneously, Ataru's conversation with Shinobu takes an unexpected turn as Mendo and Lum crash the scene, leaving emotions and relationships more tangled than before. A classroom exercise in bonding leads to a cave adventure, with each participant secretly hoping for a moment with their crush. Mendo, ever the leader, guides them, but darkness and diverging paths thwart their plans. Mendo and Ataru, plagued by the former's fears and the latter's mischief, find themselves in a comedy of errors, with neither achieving their romantic aims. The darkness of the cave becomes a metaphor for the unknown in their relationships, until Lum's electrifying abilities reveal an astonishing sight, a spaceship. The cave's secrets extend beyond rocky walls to cosmic mysteries, hinting at new adventures. Back on Earth, a slumbering lady lies in a pod aboard the activated vessel, orbiting silently above, a silent herald of stories yet to unfold. Episode 4 during a lively tennis match, Lum's powerful serve sends the ball flying beyond the boundaries of the court. This sends a group of Crow Tang into a frenzy as they accidentally drop the sleeping pod they are carrying. The pod careens down a hill, causing chaos, and finally crashes into their elder. Meanwhile, on the tennis court, the pod lands squarely on top of Mendo, and both he and Ataru are immediately smitten with the woman inside. The Crow Tang hastily awaken their elder and explain they have found a perfect match for their queen. The elder shares with everyone that Princess Kurama is in search of a husband suggests that Mendo might be the one. As they try to persuade Mendo to seal the deal with a kiss to awaken Kurama, Ataru, despite Lum's efforts to restrain him, steals the kiss. Kurama stirs to consciousness, and seeing Mendo assumes he's her rescuer, but Ataru jumps in, and an infuriated Lum swiftly ejects him from the vicinity with a bolt of electricity. A council with the Crow Tang and Lum convenes to discuss Princess Kurama's situation. The Crow Tang leaned towards Mendo as Kurama's betrothed, but tradition dictates that the man who kissed her must be her groom. The elder is about to confess the truth to Kurama when he discovers she has already set out to find Mendo. At this point, Kurama sweeps into the classroom where Mendo, Ataru, and Shinobu are attending to their student council responsibilities. She brushes Ataru aside and zeroes in on Mendo. The Crow Tengu swoop in, urging Mendo to play his part as Kurama's chosen lover. Despite the grumbles from their classmates and Mendo's own hesitations, he is whisked away by Kurama into a specially constructed love nest. Inside this nest, Ataru, tied up yet cunning, slips in along with the elder to drop the bombshell on Kurama that it was Ataru who actually kissed her. Kurama's heart still yearns for Mendo, but the elder insists she must honor their tradition. To ascertain the consequences of not doing so, they contact their home planet. The truth revealed by the first-generation elder shows the tradition to be sentimental and ultimately meaningless. In a fit of rage, Kurama demolishes the satellite link. Left alone with Mendo, Kurama finds herself reassured by his presence until Ataru, ever the trickster, traps Mendo under a bell, exposing Mendo's less flattering qualities. Disenchanted, Kurama's interest in him wanes. Liberated from the weight of her people's customs, Kurama departs on a new quest, determined to find a suitor who truly matches her ideals. Episode 5 Taru is intrigued by the sight of Cherry and Kotatsu Neko roasting a fish near Tomobiki High School. Cherry cryptically hints at being a chaperone, sparking Ataru's curiosity. Soon after, Hokuto and Kosuke tip Ataru off about a new, attractive nurse at school, and he wastes no time dashing to her office. To his surprise and that of the other boys, including Mendo, they find that the nurse is none other than Sakura, the shrine maiden. Their marriage proposals are swiftly rejected as Sakura, frustrated by their forwardness, sends them packing with a swift hit from her heel. Sakura, annoyed by the student's lecherous behavior, is approached by teachers needing her exorcism services for a pair of boxing gloves. Before she can act, Cherry bursts in, causing commotion over his stolen fish. In the chaos, Sakura accidentally sends one glove flying out the window, where it's caught by Lum, who happens to be passing by. Later, Lum shows the glove to Adaru, who, after putting it on, becomes possessed and uncontrollably hugs any girl near him. Despite his protests of innocence, his reputation leads to disbelief. In a bizarre demonstration, Adaru 
Mamoru hugs Mendo with a cursed glove. Sakura arrives with the teachers to shed light on the glove's haunted history. When the second glove is placed on Ataru, his predicament worsens. He's forced into a violent embrace with Onsen Mark, followed by a knockout punch. To quell the glove's hostile spirit, Sakura conjures a talisman-infused boxing ring for a bout between Ataru and Lum. Ataru endures a brutal pummeling until the gloves finally loosen, yet his relief is short-lived as he foolishly hugs Sakura, inciting her to knock him out with the violent glove. The next morning, Ataru shuns Lum's companionship on the way to school, only to brazenly flirt with Shinobu, which upsets Lum. At school, Mendo is showered with love letters, inciting jealousy among the boys, who disdainfully eye Ataru and Lum's close rapport. In the restroom, Pusuke and the other boys devise a plan to humiliate Ataru and Mendo by crafting a spiteful, fictitious love letter from Otoko Kumino. Mendo is enraged by the letter's mocking tone. Lum, trying to make Ataru jealous, pretends to comfort Mendo. Ataru, unaffected, agrees to a bet with Mendo about Otoko's existence, wagering money against the class presidency. Kosuki and the gang choose to support Ataru, hiring a girl to pose as Otoko for a cafe rendezvous. Lum, seeking to spark Ataru's jealousy, hints at dating Mendo. Ataru's indifference prompts a frustrated zap from Lum. Later, perched on a tree, Lum eavesdrops on Kosuke's group, learning their hired Otoko has bailed. Unfazed, Ataru remains hopeful. At the cafe, the boys and Ataru await Otoko. But as time ticks by with no sign of her, Lum steps in. She disguises herself as Otoko, rescuing Ataru from humiliation, much to his classmates' amazement. On their riverside walk home, Ataru grumbles about the prank, but Lum chides him for his pride. Spotting the same hand-holding couple, a twinge of jealousy hits Lum, and Ataru, noticing her reaction, feels a pull towards her. Just as Lum is about to depart, Ataru reaches out, asking to walk her home. Her heart warmed, Lum agrees, and they stroll hand in hand. As they enjoy this newfound closeness, Lum's father calls, hinting at an ominous annual event looming on the horizon. Episode 6 Ataru lumbers home, his stomach growling with the promise of a sukiyaki feast, only to find his culinary dream interrupted by Lum, clad in battle armor, who is adamant about him participating in a peculiar event named Setsubun. Ignoring his protests and cravings, she whisks him away through a portal to her planet as they arrive amidst what seems to be the brink of war, with only aliens and gods of luck at odds. Ataru is petrified. His lament reaches his mother back on Earth, whose concern grows as he fails to appear for his favorite dish. The conch horn sounds, not signaling war, but beginning a bizarre game of tower basket toss, and Ataru's despondency shifts to excitement when he spots Benton, a striking girl on the rival team. His flirtatious nature kicks in, much to Lum's chagrin. Meanwhile, Ataru's parents and Cherry, who's been having ominous visions of Ataru's demise, decide on a sagaki ritual, feasting on sukiyaki as an offering to Ataru's supposed wandering spirit. Back at the game, Ataru's antics with Benton provoke Lum, who retaliates, resulting in their team's loss. As punishment, Ataru is pelted with beans by both teams. On Earth, Cherry, enjoying the sukiyaki, joins Ataru's mother in a prayer for Ataru. Switching to Ataru's room on Earth, he's bedridden with a cold. Shinobu's visit with apple slices is disrupted by Cherry's appetite, followed by Ataru's friends who are more interested in Lum's whereabouts. They learn she's gone to Neptune, leaving a trail of disappointment. Suddenly, the room temperature drops, and Cherry attributes the cold to the closet. When Mendo bravely investigates, a wave of snow from an otherworldly portal crashes into the room, revealing a Yuki Ona named Oyuki. As Cherry and Shinobu express their dismay, Oyuki, feeling unwelcome, leaves through the portal with the star-struck boys in tow. The group is led by Oyuki to a gaping hole, the portal to Neptune. One by one, they fall in, including Ataru, who finds himself amidst Lum and Oyuki's entourage. While the boys labor with snow, Ataru's flirtations with Oyuki earn him electric retribution from Lum. Oyuki offers Ataru refuge from Lum's wrath in her room, but their interaction triggers her yeti guardian, Bibo, into a frenzy, chasing Ataru back to Earth. The escapade culminates with Ataru, now a local celebrity, taken hostage by the Yeti atop his house. He's later found bandaged in bed, with Mendo, who has been left behind, still tirelessly shoveling snow. In the final scene at Tomobiki High, as Onsen Mark wraps up the semester, Ataru unexpectedly announces his retirement, inciting a slew of assumptions. Onsen Mark points to his poor grades. Mendo believes he's relinquishing his role as the lead, and chaos ensues with various characters jockeying for the main role, until Ataru clarifies he's stepping down as class president, not from the limelight of their daily shenanigans. Episode 7 
Beneath the glistening surface of the Mendo family pool, a lonely monster finishes his meal and bemoans his solitude, unaware that his wish for company is about to be granted with the arrival of Ataru. At the poolside, Ataru's eyes dance over the spectacle of ladies in swimsuits, mentally converting every surrounding man into vegetables. The fun escalates with Mendo, Cherry, Lum, and Shinobu joining in. Mendo's praise of Lum's swimsuit nearly sparks Shinobu's jealousy, but Sakura, sitting not far away, is already at her limit with the youngster's noise. Ataru's audacious flirting leads to a swift reprimand from Sakura, and he finds himself plunging into the pool. Time ticks away, and Lum grows concerned over Ataru's prolonged absence underwater. She dives in after him, only to discover Ataru in the clutches of the monster, who swiftly becomes enamored with Lum. Ataru makes a quick exit, trading places with the monster, who dashes off to serve tea to Lum. On land, Ataru enlists Cherry and Sakura to address the underwater menace, while the monster, busy fetching snacks, leaves the coast clear. The group descends and uncovers the monster's abode, finding Lum breathless. The monster's return to the surface causes panic, and amidst the commotion and dwindling oxygen, Mendo struggles to articulate the monster's need to leave. With everyone gone, the reality dawns on the monster. Despite Lum's and Ataru's sympathy, Mendo stands firm, and the creature, resigned, departs with his possessions. That evening, Ataru discovers the monster has moved into his bathtub, to his mother's dismay. The next day, tasked with monster relocation, Ataru's mother sends him off with a promise to forward the creature's belongings once he finds a new address. The beach is today's destination, where Ataru hopes to find a haven for his aquatic companion. Meanwhile, Sakura enjoys a serene meal with Tsubame, her fiancé, blissfully unaware of the chaos about to unfold. As Ataru and the monster amble past, they finally reach a spot where the monster feels at home. Ataru leaves him to his peace, but the solitude weighs heavily on the creature. Spying Tsubame and Sakura, the monster prepares to greet her, but is swiftly intercepted by Ataru. In the midst of these tangled encounters, boy envies the perceived camaraderie, mistaking the monster monster for a pet. As Tsubam and Sakura lean in for a kiss, the monster's interruption cascades into a reveal of all the hidden onlookers. To lift the spirits of the dejected group, the monster presents his specially prepared food. The boy, convinced his pet Pochi would be well cared for by this bunch, leaves the pet nearby. Ataru's brainwave to leave the monster in a box marked for a loving home is interrupted when the boy takes the box, unknowingly choosing the monster over his own pet, which turns out to be Cherry. In a final twist, the monster embraces his new identity as Pochi, sending Ataru's mother a postcard from his new home, expressing contentment in his fresh start amidst unexpected friends. Episode 8 in the warmth of the principal's kotatsu, Onsen enjoys a quiet tea with the big cat and the school principal. Their moment of peace shudders with the tremors of a grand entrance. Lum arrives, apologizing for her tardiness, followed by her father, the source of the shaking. Both take their seats across from Onsen and the principal. Onsen, flustered, confesses his doubts about teaching an extraterrestrial like Lum, but her father dismisses the concerns, boasting of his daughter's genius. At school, Onsen introduces Lum to the class as a new student, eliciting a choke surprise from Ataru amidst his lunch. The introduction sets off a chain of events that shakes up the day. As recreation day kicks off, Ataru's irritation with Lum's presence is soothed by the news of a beautiful transfer student next door. Without missing a beat, he's making introductions. And Ron, the new girl, is soon the focus of his fickle heart. Lum interrupts with a shock, but not before Ran privately summons her for a later rendezvous. Behind the school, old friends Lum and Ran reconnect. The pleasantry sour when Ran dredges up past grievances about Lum stealing her bow, Raph Ron's vendetta against Lum, takes shape in a devious plan to leech the vitality from Ataru through her kiss, coercing Lum into silence about her alien origins. On the field, the scavenger hunt unfolds, but as she tries to isolate him for a kiss, Lum and Mendo become unexpected obstacles in this game of affection. The cavalry battle brings more chaos as Lum teams up with Ataru, Kosuke, and Hokuto. Ataru's relentless pursuit of Ron is thwarted by Lum's quick thinking, leading Kosuke to take the draining kiss intended for Ataru. Later by the river, Lum confronts Ron. They reminisce about a childhood wish upon a star for the perfect husband, reigniting Ron's fury at Lum's knack for unwittingly outshining her. Lum's school day is interrupted by a mechanical messenger, a miniature Ron revealing plans for a farewell party and an invitation for Lum and Ataru. The robotic harbinger ends its duty with a self-destruct. That evening, Ataru and Lum visit Ron's otherworldly domicile. Inside, Ataru offers Ron flowers and she reciprocates with cookies, treats Lum's are tainted. 
Her suspicions seem confirmed when an animated vase dozes off after consuming one. In the kitchen as Lum washes up under the guise of helpfulness, Ataru boldly seeks a kiss from Ron, who demurs. Ron's oven holds a secret, a clone of Ataru, marked with a floating by his head. The clone's brief encounter with the real Ataru ends with a swap of the uh. The ensuing chaos has Lum dragging the real Ataru now marked away as Ron drains her clone's essence. Back home, Lum contemplates Ron's departure, only to find out the next day that her old friend remains, her thirst for vengeance against Lum unsated. Episode 9 Cherry, the enigmatic monk, sits by his steaming pot, reading the sky's omens. He murmurs about the clouds, portending trouble. His stew bubbles a prophecy of doom. A great shadow swoops overhead with a fierce roar. Ataru, preoccupied with tidying his room for Shinobu's visit, brushes off Lum's suggestions for fun activities. Cherry's sudden appearance through the window brings a grave warning of a beast on the prowl, set on finding Ataru. Dismissed by an agitated Ataru, Cherry's cautions fall on deaf ears. As Shinobu approaches Ataru's home, the very beast Cherry feared blocks her path, its arm ensnaring her. It shifts shape into a more human form. At Ataru's, Lum tries to entice Ataru away from the window where he waits for Shinobu. Instead, Shinobu herself arrives in dramatic fashion, straddling the beast's head, which morphs into Rei, Lum's ex fiance Rei's presence turns the room upside down. His pursuit of Lum is unwelcome. She has eyes only for Ataru. Ataru's mother, however, is instantly smitten by Rei's handsome human guise, returning decked out in an attempt to charm him with sweet potatoes, which he devours, much to Lum's dismay. Despite Rei's fervent advances, Lum consistently rebuffs him, her heart still tied to Ataru. In frustration, Rei's form reverts to the beast, igniting a frenzied chase through Tomobiki Park. The park's peaceful proposals are disrupted, food stalls plundered, with the mayhem trailing back to Ataru's doorstep. A crowd of jilted women, hoodwinked by Rei's unintended proposals and irate vendors, victim to his appetite, demand justice from Ataru and Rei. At school, class two, four revels in their free study. Disturbed only by Mendo's futile efforts to contact his chauffeur via radio, the frequency overtaken by Channel Ray. Ray crashes in, beast form and all. Mendo, seizing the role of Lum's guardian upon discovering Ray's past with her, is left dismayed as Ray's transformation to his oni form ensnares the hearts of the female students. Ran, seizing an opportunity, diverts Lum and demands she broker a match with Ray. Amid the chaos, Ray, now in his appealing oni form, is berated by Mendo but wins over the girls, including Ran who tempts him with a homemade lunch. His enjoyment of the meal is a small victory for Ron, although he still calls for Lum, oblivious to Ron's affection. Cherry's offering is met with the same polite indulgence by Ray, prompting Ran to return with yet another meal to vie for his attention. Ray's abrupt departure is shrouded in mystery until Cherry relays his whispered message. Later, back at Ataru's house, Ray finds refuge and sustenance once again at the hands of Ataru's ever-hospitable mother. As the day winds down, a misunderstanding at the Moroboshi household hints at divorce, but is revealed to be a mix-up with papers for a parent-teacher meeting. Far above on the Oni dreadnought, Lum's mother preens herself, preparing for the same school event, hinting at interstellar parents soon to converge on Tomobiki High. Episode 10 Ataru's mother strides into Tomobiki High School, visibly irked that Ataru's father shirked the parenting event. En route to the classroom, she joins forces with Shinobu's mother, their chatter halted by an odd spectacle, an ox-driven cart halted by an altercation between a janitor and a butler. Their squabble ends abruptly as a spaceship descends, squashing the cart beneath it. The cart's passenger, disheveled but unharmed, emerges from the debris. The spaceship's hatch opens, and a woman bearing a striking resemblance to Lum steps out. She engages in an alien tongue with Ataru's mother, just as Lum embraces her, revealing the woman to be her own mother. Mendo, spotting his mother among the crowd, tries to explain her distress over her demolished ox cart to Lum's mother. But before the butler can interject, Lum's misinterpretation transforms the complaint into a warm exchange, drawing her mother to envelop Mendo in an affectionate hug. Mendo's mother, incensed by the hug, throws down a challenge for a duel to Lum's mother, who mistakenly turns down what she thinks is a marriage proposal from Mendo. As the school day concludes, the duel is left uninitiated, everyone dispersing for home. Elsewhere, Lum disrupts Ataru's slumber, and later they share breakfast with his parents. On their walk to school, Lum marvels at a yellow maple leaf adorning her hair, a novelty explained by Satoshi. Her fascination with the changing colors is short-lived, however, as her temper flares at Ataru's flirtatious antics. At school, Ataru impresses classmates with his yo-yo prowess, while Lum knits a doll of Ataru. A casual remark by Mendo about Lum's potential departure spurs her to voice her worries for Ataru's well-being in her absence. In Ataru's room, 
room. An argument with Lum leaves her handcrafted doll an unnoticed gift on his desk as she exits via the window. The next morning, without Lum's company, Ataru learns of her absence at school. Relishing his newfound freedom, he revels in flirtation, only to discover Lum's doll later that afternoon. The following days see Ataru safeguarding the doll in his pocket. As Ataru ponders Lum's absence, Hokuto and Mendo speculate about their relationship. Mendo's comment about Lum leaving Ataru propels a desperate demand for her return, though Mendo denies any involvement. With Mendo's private police in search, Taru revisits sentimental spots, finding no trace of Lum, despairing over her departure. Aboard the Oni Dreadnought, Lum spars with her parents over a passport renewal. Unbeknownst to her, a radio activates, revealing the doll's true purpose, a listening device. Taru's heartfelt sobs echo through, painting a picture of his distress. The next morning, Taru's gloom lifts as Lum reappears, greeting him cheerily. They proceed to school, Lum clinging to his arm, pleased to find the doll in his pocket. The silent sentinel of their shared moments now out in the open. Episode 11 in the bustling Tomobiki shopping district, amidst a throng of sail banners and stalls, a young lady enjoys the gentle sway of an oxen cart, her servants close at hand. A delicate handkerchief slips from her grasp, drifting down until it's scooped up by Ataru. Driven by curiosity and a penchant for the romantic, Ataru follows the fragrance left on the fabric to its owner. She requests Ataru's hand, a gesture of gratitude perhaps, but his touch reveals not flesh but bone, sending him scurrying in terror, much to the young lady's delight. At school, Ataru Taru recounts his skeletal encounter to Mendo, who dismisses the tale with scorn, even as Lum confirms the truth of it. Yet when Hokuto lends credibility, mentioning men in dark clothes, a flicker of recognition crosses Mendo's face. Noon approaches, and the mysterious lady from earlier makes a grand entrance to Class 2, 4, her path heralded by a roll of red carpet. Introducing herself, she stirs up a storm among the girls by claiming an engagement to Mendo. Ataru steps in, trying to defuse the tension, only to learn she is the very skeleton from before. Mendo, desperate to shake off his sister Ryoko, curses under his breath as she innocently attempts to feed him a rotten lunch from days past. Moved by Ryoko's tears, Ataru volunteers to eat it instead. Loom and Ryoko spar over who will feed him, while Mendo interjects, anxious to keep his sister away from Ataru's influence. The feud escalates, and Ryoko swiftly has her servants incarcerate Mendo in a closet. Seizing the moment, Ataru flirts with Ryoko, who invites him to sneak into her estate. Mendo bursts out in retaliation, again warning against any camaraderie with Ataru. On New Year's Day, Ataru finds himself at the gates of the Mendo estate, his presence questioned by Mendo. Ataru insists he was invited, prompting Mendo to brandish his katana in a protective fervor. As fate would have it, the others, Lum, Shinobu, Sakura, Benton, and Oyuki, also joined for the festivities. Ryoko, perched high on a tower, addresses the gathering with booming enthusiasm, signaling the start of a peculiar New Year celebration. The guests are led by red arrows to a room, choosing cushions to sit upon. Ataru and Benton fall through hidden trapdoors, while the rest are chased by a wall of needles, seeking safety in the shadows. Ataru and Benton, re-emerging at the entrance, are coaxed to follow the arrows once more. Benton rebels, leading to her capture by the servants. Ataru reunites with Mendo and Shinobu, but a cup of tea laced with an anesthetic leaves them immobilized, save for the ever-resilient Lum. Ryoko's servants, having dressed Ataru in Edo period garb, inadvertently lead him to a pond plunge. Meanwhile, Lum endures a mochi eating challenge, only to be catapulted from the estate upon defeat. Mendo and Shinobu face a dark enclosure, a ploy by Mendo's father to exploit his son's phobias. But when Mendo stands firm, Shinobu takes matters into her own hands, and they set off to find their friends. Unbeknownst to the guests, they are mere pawns in a board game played by the Mendo family for entertainment. In the end, the group stumbles into the party room, where a festive finale awaits. Mendo and Ataru, launched skyward by a bamboo rocket, become part of a vibrant fireworks spectacle that brightly proclaims, Very Happy New Year! If you want more binge-worthy anime recaps like these, don't forget to like and subscribe, and definitely do not forget to comment your answer to the question of the day for a shot to be featured in our next video. Bye.